In some of the previous tutorials I've done on array methods, I have sometimes included an arrow function. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the concise syntax offered by arrow functions. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Now, arrow functions really provide two advantages. First and foremost, it solves this binding complications that occur with regular functions. Now, arrow functions also provide a concise format. We're going to focus on the concise format as that is what you need to understand to begin using them. Understanding this and the complications surrounding it would require multiple tutorials that I will need to create at some point. Or you can take my advanced course and a link's provided in the description section. We go into a lot of detail about this and this complications. Now, once you understand arrow functions, should you switch and use them exclusively? Personally, I still use regular functions for most of the functions I set up. I think they are easier to read. I tend to use arrow functions when I need to pass a function into another function, so using the advantage of first class functions which JavaScript offers, or I want to take advantage of the this binding that arrow functions offer. I think for larger functions that have a lot of code in them, the traditional function works fine. So let's take a look at the syntax. Now, first, it is important to realize that arrow functions are always function expressions. They're never function declarations. And if you need to review my tutorial on the difference between those two, I'll include a link in the description section of this tutorial. So right here, we have a function declaration. Now, to make it easier to understand the conversion to an arrow function, let's first turn this into a function expression. So I'm going to declare it as a part of a greater expression. That's how you know it's a function expression. Oops, forgot the equal. Like that. So here we have a simple function expression. We then call it here, and then we log to the console. Before we convert this to an arrow function, let me just check really quick, make sure everything's working. And it is. All right, now we can look at converting this to an arrow function. So arrow functions allow us to remove many of the elements that are a part of regular functions. For example, we do not need the keyword function. That can be gone. And unless we have more than one line in the function, we don't need the curly braces. We can remove that. In place of that, we're going to put the arrow. That's what designates it as an arrow function. We also don't need the return keyword unless we have more than one line in the function because it will assume that we want to return the value that is generated by that function. And then I'll just remove this last curly brace. So there is the same function expressed as an arrow function. We're assigning it to a variable. Therefore, it's an, a function expression. Here's where the function begins. We have the parentheses. And technically, with a single parameter, we could eliminate the parentheses if we wanted to. Then we have the arrow, and then we have the body of our function. And by default, it knows to return the value that's generated there. So let me save that, and let's just take a look and see if that still works. Refresh it, and sure enough, we get the same thing. Now, as I mentioned, arrow functions still could have the curly brace braces that surround the body of the function. But that is usually done when there is more than one line. And it would require us to use the return keyword as well. So here's a situation where we may want to use the curly braces in the arrow function. I'm going to add another parameter. And this is going to be time. And then we will just include a couple of lines here. So if time is equal to day, then we turn a particular greeting, something like this. If t 
time is equal to night. Then our greeting is different. So, and we could continue on with that. Time could be a number of different things. But this would require us to use curly braces. And notice it also requires us to use the return keyword. Curly braces because there's more than one line. And then when we use curly braces, we want to make sure we use the return keyword. So now let's go ahead and indicate day as the parameter we're passing in and see what our greeting is. And there we go. All right, let me show one more example. I mentioned that I've used arrow functions in my tutorials when I've done tutorials on the array methods. If you want to view some of those, I'll include links to those in the description as well. But let's look at a simple example of that. So I'm going to remove all of this. And let's just set up an array. We're just going to have four, whoops, four numbers in it five numbers. And now we're going to map this array to a new array. So array to the second array map and then the way map works if you haven't gone through that tutorial is we pass in a function. And as I mentioned this is where I commonly use arrow functions is when I'm passing them in. It's just cleaner I think. So let's do it with an arrow function first, and then I'll show you what it would look like with a regular function. So arrow function is very concise. All I need to do is pass in the parameter. That's the parameter. And since there's only one, I don't need to include parentheses, so I even save space there. Then I include the arrow. And now what is going to be returned? I'm just adding two to every value in the array. And that's what will create the new array. So the new array will consist of each of these values with two added to it. All right, let's go ahead and log to the console that new array so we can see it. Save that and let's take a look at it. And there's a new array and it has two added to each of those numbers. Now, how would this work with a traditional function? Well, it would look like this. Specify the new array. And we're going to map, and this time we pass an anonymous function. You can see we have to type quite a bit more with a regular function. All right, comment out that line. Now, as you can see, we get the same thing. But with the arrow function, much more concise. You save on a lot of typing. And I think in this case, where you're passing a function into another function, it's more readable. Um, I like that about the arrow function. However, when I'm declaring functions, like we did before, when I'm declaring functions that I'm going to be using throughout my code, then I will generally use a regular function. But you can really decide how you want to implement arrow functions in your own work. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also, hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Or click the circle link, the one on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. Or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. That's where you can find the courses and a complete list of tutorials tutorials. Thanks for watching.